Well, then in 2015, you represented Suge Knight. Yes. How did you get on that case? You know, I got a call from a young lawyer who was representing Suge and wanted me to have dinner with him, and I did. And he said Suge Knight would like you to consider defending him. And one thing led to another. And for seven months, I represented Suge Knight. Uh, then I had a falling out uh, with various people, and I basically withdrew from the case. But, you know, Suge was always decent to me, very bright guy, uh, very creative, a lot of leadership ability, a uh, very talented man, and always treated me well. I have to say that. But there were some differences that developed. They're confidential, and I'll leave it at that. But uh, I only have decent things to say about him. Well, I mean, the case kind of focused over a situation in Compton where he goes to uh, the film set of Straight Outta Compton movie. During the course, an altercation breaks out and he ends up running his car uh, into uh, Clee uh, Bone Sloan, who was beating him up at the time. He runs him over, but then he ends up also hitting Terry Carter, which was his friend, and ends up killing him. Um, Suge Knight said he acted in self-defense. He did. So you think he acted in self-defense? I think it was pure self-defense. And I'll take it a step further. I think if a old white lady had been driving that car and did what Suge Knight did, they'd be giving her a medal in downtown Los Angeles for mm. what she did instead of charging her with murder. I think he was charged because he was Suge. Well, you were originally on the case. And then Stephen L. Schwartz took over. And then uh, Thaddeus Culpepper replaced, uh, replaced him. And then uh, Antoine D. Williams, uh, Jamal Tucson, and Jeremy Lessam took over the case. And I believe some of the lawyers ended up getting indicted, right? You know, I don't know what they did or didn't do. I know I never did anything wrong. <laughs> right. And nor would I. Um, <laughs> I won't comment on those cases because I really don't know much about them. Well, ultimately, September 2018, uh, Knight pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to 28 years in prison, 22 years running over the victim and six years because it was a third strike. Do you think that Suge should have taken it to trial? I thought it was very defensible. I really did. I did too. I thought it was very, very defensible. Look at that tape. You know, it appears that people are surrounding Suge. Uh, what is Suge to do? He never gets out of the truck. He never uses a weapon illegally. He basically was attacked and he got out of there. And unfortunately, someone was fatally injured. Another person was injured, survived. Uh, what is Suge supposed to do? Well, I think what they were saying was at the moment that he backed up, he could have just gotten away. Instead, he ended up ramming the guy that was that was beating him up, Bone. And well, then take, in the a process, look, take a look at the whole tape. It appears that people are starting to surround Suge. Mm -hmm. And Suge knows the territory. Suge knows the neighborhood. Suge knows who these guys are. And Suge takes off to get out of there. And mm -hmm. I think it was pure self-defense. Well, I remember I interviewed uh, Reggie Wright uh, Jr., who was you know, had a security at death row at one point. And he was talking to Suge around that time. And what he explained to me on camera was that not only was Suge facing that situation, but he was actually facing three different felonies. Because there was other, there was the whole thing of uh, threatening uh, the movie director. And there was also like the taking of the camera. So from Suge's point of view, what I was told was that he had to beat three different felonies because it was his third strike. And then potentially three more appeals to avoid that third strike in life in prison. So that's why he ended up taking that plea deal. Then lo and behold, a short time after that interview I did with Big U, 28 year plea deal. Yeah. And, and you were talking to Suge in prison during this time? <laughs> I talked to him a year, a year and a half ago. Okay. Spoke to him once after the plea. And what he pretty much explained or said was he would have had to win six times to not get life in jail. Win six times? 
Because there were six different charges? It was three different charges. But he would have had to beat those twice because they would have kept retrying him. Mm. It was the, the alleged threat on the director do, the alleged theft, which Cat Williams had played out too with the, uh, the photographer lady, and then the, the, uh, the hit and run and the attempted murder cases, which, like I said, you can try them twice. Right, so, because he already had two strikes. Well, not only because of the strikes. Well, that's why he would have got life. Yeah. And so he would have, instead of getting life, which now he, with my calculation with California law and everything, and the time he did in the L.A. County Jail and stuff, I don't see it, him doing more than 16 years, which would make him 69 years of age, if everything works in his favor. You know, again, I wasn't involved in the plea bargaining that went into that. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning was. He was facing some other cases. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, and ultimately, he took the plea deal 22 years. He was eligible for parole in uh, July of 2037. Have you talked to him after that case? I have not. Gotcha. 